In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Words from a hymn. Love divine, all loves excelling. Joy of heaven to earth come down. Fit, fix in us thy humble dwelling. All thy faithful mercies crown. Jesus, thou art all compassion. Pure, unbounded love thou art. Visit us with thy salvation. Enter every trembling heart. And the last stanza. Finish then thy new creation. Pure and spotless let us be. Let us see thy great salvation perfectly restored in thee. Change from glory into glory till in heaven we take our place. Till we cast our crowns before thee, lost in wonder, love, and praise. Let us pray. God, our shepherd, restorer of our souls, the one who calls us to rest in green pastures, we enter into this worshipful gathering, trusting that you will guide us along the paths of righteousness. Wherever we may be in this world, let us know the comforting presence of your rod and staff. We are expected, O oh God, that our fears will fade, that our cups will overflow, and that your goodness and mercy will accompany us. In this time and beyond, now let us worship you in spirit and in truth. Amen. As opening sentences, I'll read Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me in paths of still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of this life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. You think I'd never said it before. Well, welcome to this service, May the 8th of the year 2022, on behalf of Solomon's United Church of Christ in McCungie, Pennsylvania. This is the season of the Sundays after Easter, but it's also a special service at Solomon's because we celebrate Mother's Day. There's no way to do it online, but were you to be part of the worship service, you would find that for all mothers and women, uh, there would be a gift to be received in honor of Mother's Day. And now a call to confession. God calls us ever more intently into the fullness of life that abounds in God's presence. Let us acknowledge the ways our unbelief has separated us from God's vision for our lives and for all creation. Let us pray. God, we confess that we often let hopelessness have too much power over our lives. In the face of crisis, our faith has frequently faltered. In the midst of calamity, our fearlessness has faded. In the presence of tribulation, our worry has weakened our ability to act justly. Help our unbelief, O oh God. Bring us back to you, great Redeemer. Remind us of the unfailing treasure that is in your love 
and care for all creation. For your grace is sufficient from the valley of death to the tables you have prepared for us. Embolden us again and revive our spirits. Amen. Most unusual, I want to offer a hymn as an assurance of pardon. I'll read the refrain after the first stanza, but not repeat it for stanzas two through four. We praise thee, O God, for the Son of thy love, for Jesus who died and is now gone above. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us again. We praise thee, O God, for thy spirit of light who has shown us our Savior and scattered our light. We praise thee, O God, for the joy thou hast given to thy saints in communion, these foretastes of heaven. Revive us again. Fill each heart with thy love. May each soul be rekindled with fire from above. Yes, thine is the glory. Revive us again. I found something that's called a mother's creed. It certainly isn't an affirmation of faith. If you want to skip through it, you're welcome to, of course, with any part of the service. But it's called a mother's creed. I believe in the internal purposes of home as a fundamental institution of society. I believe in the immeasurable possibilities of every boy and girl. I believe in the imagination, the trust, the hopes, and the ideals which dwelt in the heart of all children. I believe in the beauty of nature, of art, of books, and of friendship. I believe in the satisfactions of duty. I believe in the special joys of everyday life. I believe in the goodness of the grand design which lies beyond our complex world. I believe in the safety and peace which surrounds us all through the ever brooding love of God. Yes, uh, to those who, to whom it is apl applies, as you are viewing or hearing today's service on YouTube or Facebook, Happy Mother's Day. Two passages of scripture. After this, I looked. This is Revelation chapter 7. And there was a great multitude that no one could count from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white, with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who is seated on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, singing, Amen, blessing and glory and worship and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these robed in white, and where have they come from? I said to them, Sir, you are the one that knows. Then he said to me, These are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason they are before the throne of God and worship him day and night within his temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them, 
nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of the water of life, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. And then Acts chapter 9. In Joppa, there was a disciple whose name was Tabitha, which in Greek is Dorcas. She was devoted to good works and acts of charity. At that time, she became ill and died. When they had washed her, they laid her in a room upstairs. Since Lida was near Joppa, the disciples who heard that Peter was there sent two men to him with the request. Please come to us without delay. So Peter got up and went with them, and when he arrived, they took him to the room upstairs. All the widows stood beside him, weeping and showing tunics and other clothing that Dorcas had made while she was with them. Peter put all of them outside, and then he knelt down and prayed. He turned to the body and said, Tabitha, get up. Then she opened her eyes, and seeing Peter, she sat up. He gave her his hand and helped her up. Then calling the saints and widows, he showed her to be alive. This became known throughout Joppa, and many believed in the Lord. Meanwhile, he stayed in Joppa for some time with a certain Simon, a tanner. Here ends the reading of the lessons for today. The title of my message is Meet Susanna Ansley. No, she's not here with me now. And she won't be with me at worship tomorrow. Susanna Ansley was born in London in 1669. She was the last of three, I'm sorry, 25 children born to Mary and Samuel Ansley, Samuel being a pastor. At age 19, she married Samuel Wesley. Yes, that Wesley family. Samuel Wesley's father was a pastor. Samuel's mother was the daughter of a pastor. You see see a pattern here? Susanna and Samuel Wesley had 19 children, of which nine did not survive childhood. Susanna ran a household where, where faith was prominent, daily prayer and meditation. The children had to memorize the Lord's Prayer shortly after they learned how to speak, and they said it twice a day as a family. For a period of time, while Susanna's husband was away, she set up a Sunday afternoon service in her home with prayers and scriptures and the reading of a sermon, sometimes one from her father, sometimes one from her husband. In a short order, Over time, there were as many as 200 people attending her services. And the last thing to say about Susanna, of her three sons who grew to adulthood, all three became pastors, Samuel, John, and Charles. John, of course, we know as the founder of the Methodist Church. Charles was a major supporter of the Methodist movement, but also a prolific hymn writer, some 6,500 hymns. The reason for wanting you to meet Susanna, it's an unusual example of how a mother could be strong-willed since the father was absent various periods of time. She could be so strong-willed 
and lead her children into faith. And so much so that all three of her sons became pastors. I think of my own family. I'm the only one I know of who has ever become a pastor. On my mother's side, way, way back when, there was a pastor. Uh, curiously, he went through college and seminary, was ordained, and then found out he couldn't preach. He couldn't speak in public. So he made a living as a writer of sermons. But nobody else in my family, including my two sons, have become clergy. Don't worry, I love them just the same. And they are both people of strong faith. Thanks probably more to Diane than to myself. But yes, the story of Susanna is a lesson in how faith can be carried from generation to generation. And I trust that in your families, you consider ways in how to take the faith and pass it on to the next generation. And I know some of the next generation or two or three don't have much to do with church. But if we've raised our children well enough, hopefully some of what we taught them about faith still holds true for them. Now, I want to switch by talking about Dorcas she is mentioned only in that reading from the book of Acts. But you notice we are told she was a disciple. Remember that there were the 12, sometimes called simply the 12. And later on, after the resurrection, they were called the apostles. But there were many, many who were called disciples. Uh, those who followed Jesus in one way or another. We don't know if Dorcas had ever met Jesus, but it describes her as a disciple, a good woman devoted to charity, always helping others. And indeed, when she died and Peter was called to the room where her body lay, the widows were showing all the nice things that Dorcas had made for them. And then he dismissed the women from the room, and he brought Dorcas, also known as Tabitha, back to life. Yes, sometimes a good person, in this case a woman, uh, needs to live a little longer to spread the goodness of God's faith. May this be a blessed Mother's Day for you. And may you feel proud, happy, and content in what you have been able to write, wrought, sorry, in your own family life. Happy Mother's Day, one and all. Amen. A hymn, it's under the marriage, but it's also for women. Your love, O oh God, has called us here, for all have, <laughs> for all love finds its source in you. The perfect love that casts out fear, that love that Christ makes ever new. O God of love, inspire our life. Reveal your will in all we do. Join every husband, every wife in mutual love and love for you. I've got to get a different pair of glasses, I now realize, where the uh, whole glass is made for seeing near. Uh, I'm both lacking in good vision for seeing far and near. But the glasses I'm wearing now 
I tend to look through the upper part, which then I don't read so well what's in front of me. Now an invitation to the offering. We believe in the God of justice and righteousness, and God believes in us to carry on the mission of loving and caring for our communities. Let us now share our gifts and resources so that we may continue to walk humbly with God and with our neighbors. And a prayer for the blessing of our gifts. Loving Shepherd, we thank you for your tender care. Everything we have comes with the goodness of your love. Receive these our gifts that sheep in other flocks may come to know you and discover that you are the one who lays down your life for the flock. I ask us to turn now to the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now for a benediction uh, based kind of on Psalm 23. The Lord is our shepherd, we shall not want. We lie down in green pastures and drink from still waters. Our shepherd restores our souls. Even though we walk through the darkest valleys, we fear no evil, for our shepherd travels with us. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we will dwell with our shepherd forever. I close with a hymn. Somebody took the hymn tune, Faith of Our Fathers, and turned it into a different hymn, Faith of Our Mothers. I want to read all of this hymn to you. There are four stanzas. Faith of our mothers living still in cradle song and bedtime prayer, in nursery lore and fireside love, Thy presence still pervades the air. Faith of our mothers, living still, we will be true to thee till death. Faith of our mothers, loving faith, fount of our childhood, trust and grace. Oh, may thy consecration prove source of a finer, nobler race. Faith of our mothers, living faith, we will be true to thee till death. Faith of our mothers, guiding faith, from youthful longing, youthful doubt, how blurred our vision, blind our way, thy providential care without. Faith of our mothers, guiding faith, we will be true to thee till death. Faith of our mothers, Christian faith, in truth beyond our stumbling creeds. Still serve the home and save the church and breathe thy spirit through our deeds. Faith of our mothers, Christian faith, we will be true to thee till death. Well, again, happy Mother's Day to all to whom it applies. Uh, Please continue keeping yourself safe. I just saw in the news how we're nearing just about a million people having passed away in this country alone with the COVID virus, at least a part of their illness. And I also read that hospitals are getting overwhelmed again because this variant apparently is not as as lethal but it's quite contagious, so there's many people coming down with it. So keep healthy and be safe, and may God bless you now and always. Bye-bye.